Hello, Professor Didi here. Today to talk about bureaucracy. The point of today's discussion on bureaucracy is to give you an idea about what bureaucracy is. When everyone thinks about bureaucracy, they think about government bureaucracy, government red tape. But when I talk about this, I want you to think about another type of bureaucracy that we deal with a lot. Corporate bureaucracy. Bureaucracy in the workplace. Bosses that sometimes micromanage too much, don't know what they're doing. That type of bureaucracy where you can't make changes. The definition of bureaucracy, and when you think about government, this applies to corporations. It's a large organization with departments and agencies and offices structured to carry out the functions of the government. And you can replace government with corporations when you think about it. Bureaucracy is a system of organization and control. It's based on a hierarchy structure, specialized rules, specialized job requirements. But even in job requirements, that gets a little fudgy. When the boss asks you to do something that isn't in your job description, sometimes you realize you got to do it. At the top, there's a hierarchy authority, a chain of command. Now, here's one thing to think about. In all hierarchy, bureaucracy, there's sometimes good chain of command and bad chain of command. It all depends who you get in the job. Job specialization is important, knowing what each person does. In any bureaucracy, it's good that various people know different jobs and have an idea of what's going on. You need formalized rules and structures. That way people don't go off on their own doing stuff. That everyone basically knows what they're doing. The idea of any bureaucracy is to work through the government by working with citizens to help them out. People will often say they hate the government, but when they have a problem with government, they want to be able to call the government and get it resolved quickly, and of course, most importantly, in their favor. When you think about bureaucracy in the U.S. government, bureaucracy, you've got the IRS, you also have the Central Intelligence Agency, you have various departments, rules, regulations, the post office, NASA, things like that. That's all of American bureaucracy. And sometimes for people, it's too much to handle. But without a lot of these organizations, government doesn't function. Whenever there's a crisis, people turn to government. After 9-11, people did not ask the airlines industry to make the, the airport safer. They asked the government to make them safer. And that's where we got to all into the various regulations and rules regarding flying. If you think about kind of the birthplace of some bureaucracy, it starts with the spoil system in the 1800s. The spoil system, the winner gets the spoils. In 1881, President Garfield was assassinated. And he was assassinated by a gentleman who was very unhappy because he didn't get a government job. Well, they changed the rules and came up with a, a system that was designed as the Pendleton Civil Service Reform Act, designed to make sure that when people were hired for federal jobs, there was about competency first and political favors much more down the road. Because sometimes in government, in state and local government, people get hired for jobs, they're not the best qualified. It's because they know somebody. The idea was basically with the federal system of bureaucracy, neutral competence. In other words, we serve everybody. We want everybody to get help. We want everyone to do well. And that's the idea behind the federal system. When I mentioned the spoil system, the winner getting the spoils, this goes back to something I talked about a little bit when I talked about political parties and patronage. Sometimes someone getting a job only because they know somebody. This can hinder bureaucracy sometimes, but also help it, knowing that the person working in the system in state and local government is working extra hard mainly because of one reason. They want to keep their job. More than 90% of the federal employees are hired through the merit system. The merit system protects the government employees from political pressure, people being fired for partisan reasons. The merit system provides for certain federal employees to be hired through competitive exams and specific qualifications. One of the other things that happens in bureaucracy is a common expression you'll hear is called a whistleblower. Whistleblowers are people that see wrongdoing in government and report it, also seeing wrongdoing in the corporate sector of the world and report it. The thing is, a whistleblower can be penalized because they are often seen as not being a team player. And this can be a problem, for, especially when protecting them. 
When we think about bureaucracy, people will complain about government. But when governments have been shut down before, like in 1995, and even more in recent times, people will say they hate the government. But when the government shuts down, they realize, here's all the things government does. It's not all that bad. One of the most important aspects in bureaucracy is congressional accountability. The primary function of the administrative agencies is a policy of implementation. And basically, Congress ends up managing this, making sure that everything is going on and structured according to the plan. God, Congress, ironically, is responsible for investigating government bureaucracy when things do go wrong. When we think about the bureaucracy, they initiate ideas for legislation. Agencies develop public policies that get implemented. Agencies are charged with delivering services and determine whether people are complying with the policy and the law. In many ways, bureaucracy has a lot of power and a lot of power to implement something strictly and then not implement. Think about the power of the police. You're speeding. They can pull you over if you're doing 65 and a 55. They can also choose not to pull you over. That's power if you think about it. Bureaucracy enforces the laws. That's their job in many ways. Make sure that neutral competence Everything enforced fairly. A couple last things about bureaucracy. Think about Hurricane Katrina and the mess of bureaucracy. The fact that the federal, state, and local government all messed up with the response of Hurricane Katrina. It was an absolute disaster. It showed a failure of bureaucracy. As I said, people will hate the government, but they want the government to respond and do it competently. We've seen the situation, if you look back at the coronavirus, and how the government handled that. Some people complained that the government did not have its act together quickly enough and competently enough. And people, as I said, they may hate the government, but when something goes wrong, they want the government to fix the problem quickly and competently. And that's an important role for government. Last thing to mention, people often talk about reforming the government, reforming bureaucracy. Reform is difficult. And the reason it's difficult is it involves the word change. You know, when people say we're going to reform things in the workplace, no one ever thinks it's going to be less work and things are going to be easier. People at times get resistant to change. But reform is important to make bureaucracy run more efficiently. In the 1980s, there were no computers in the workplace. Now computers are all over the place. Now in the workplace, when the computers are down, people expect the employees to use their cell phones and other technology in order to communicate with customers. We've seen an explosion now with teleworking, which is changing the way bureaucracy is run. Thank you again. Take care and have a great day.